Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, or good night, depending on from where you are listening. My name is Dorota. I'm coming from Global Underwater Explorers, so-called GUE. Uh, I will be talking today about GUE training and how potentially it differs from other training agencies, how uh, or what, from where we are coming from in regards of training and how really important training is for us and if that is the main um, thing that we do within GUI, because we are a training agency, but we as well do some other things that are somehow training related. So I hope you will enjoy that. Uh, I would like to start with a little bit words about myself so that you know who I am and then how much experience do I have actually training. So I'm with GUI since uh, 2004, so it's quite a long time. Uh, I was working as an instructor for different agencies as well for a very long time because I'm uh, teaching since 99. So it was a while when I was teaching and then at some point I decided to change and then follow a path of becoming a Jew instructor and now I teach solely for them and as well I develop a little bit of uh, training programs especially for the recreational domain within GUI because Potentially not everybody knows that GUI is not only a training agency for technical divers or cave divers, but we as well do have training for recreational divers, which for some people is a little bit surprising because they associate the gear that we are using and the types of dives that we are making solely with technical or cave diving. So the extreme part of divers, which is not really the case. So now today I would like to talk a little bit about that aspect to show you a little bit of from where the training is coming from is what's the philosophy behind it and uh, what differences potentially they are from other training agency agencies that are actually really only training agencies and we are a little bit uh, different from that. So what I would like to do now, I would like to share a presentation. Let me just check if everything is fine technology wise, but I have no feedback here, so it seems that it's working. So let me share uh, something with you now. And I hope oh, I need to do that. And I hope it is uh, working now. So, uh, what I would like to talk, uh, so what I would like to start with is about what really GUI training uh, is, or from where we are coming, and then uh, is it really for you or is it really for any diver and what is the difference if there is any difference from other training agencies that are out there so first of all of course GUI training as I mentioned before is associated with the technical diving and cave diving and actually the training itself the idea of starting to train came from uh, technical divers so it all started with uh, uh, cave diving uh, it all came from a group of explorers that have been uh, exploring case, caves in Florida. And in fact, the idea of training came from a very specific reason, because um, uh, on the projects, they needed to have divers because they have been missing teams to really pursue the goals of their dives. So the, uh, the team decided to... Uh, invite divers to join them but the problem was that in such an extreme environment you need to have teams you need to have divers that are following same strict protocols because otherwise it needs to be it, it might become unsafe it might become very impractical and indeed in the beginning the explorers they struggled with the need of retraining those people or maybe not even retraining but introducing them to specific uh, procedures and protocols just for the sake of being able to join the project. So from there, the idea started to grow that um, uh, there should be, or maybe the organization should introduce, or we they should create an organization that will offer training to people who would like to join the projects. So the idea itself came during a project in Turkey, I heard, uh, where the, the divers from the organization have been invited by the government to survey a certain uh, cave system. And they're sitting on top of the mountain and decided that, okay, we should potentially try to create a training for people who would like to join projects like ours. And indeed, as you see, the training came from 
cave and tech exploration. And nowadays, when you see Jewy divers uh, globally, they are joining projects that are really super interesting. And me, myself, it was one of the one of the motivations to join GUE. The other motivation was to uh, really train in a way that I really liked. And I will talk about that in a moment. But for me, one of the other motivations was really joining exciting diving. So I was, I was in the years, I joined a few of the projects. So one of them is the one that you have seen here on the, on the screen when one of our now instructors in the Red Sea organizes yearly uh, reg hunting trip where we are discovering new wrecks that nobody saw before in the Red Sea. Even if it's such a popular diving destination, there are still hundreds of wrecks that are undiscovered. And it's really super exciting to be, be able to be part of it. Another project that I took part was in Italy, where we have been diving, like two projects there that we have been diving archaeological sites that have not been only extremely deep and they have not been only really for super highly trained technical divers, but working with scientists and working with archaeological discoveries, you know, researching ancient Roman anchorage sites or battlefields, it's really extremely interesting. So the training agency uh, came from the site of exploration, both in an ocean and in cave. So now you can think, okay, so what is there for me really? Because how I'm just a recreational diver, I did my course, I have few dives, so, or even maybe I'm not a diver and my ambition yet is not exploration because I don't even know if diving is something that I like, is diving is something for me. But what we believe is that this question that it's now on screen, so can a beginner diver, so can a person that starts or thinks about becoming a diver benefit from the experiences, the knowledge, the skills that this extreme, let them call divers, offer? And is there a way that we can uh, introduce divers using similar procedures and techniques and skills developed by uh, divers who are doing exploration dive? And my thing is that absolutely yes, because what we are trying to achieve is that we will, that we have created a training that comes from an extreme environment that where the dives are done deep. They are die, they are, they have been dives done for many hours in the caves. They have been dives that have been world breaking, working in hard environments, working with specific tools, cooperating with scientists, and even helping them to decide about protection of certain environments we can go from this extreme to a training that can benefit every diver. So definitely training that was developed from the other side in a way. So it was not an idea first, okay, let's train divers and then see how we can do that. It was, yes, we are divers. We do have specific tools that we believe are pragmatic, practical and safe. And can we actually offer it to divers everywhere? that they can benefit from the experiences that we have. So absolutely, yes. So now what is what are those factors that uh, Jewish training offers that are based or that have been developed during those uh, more advanced technical cave dives or scientific dives or exploration dives? So the, the training that we are offered, and we do offer training for beginners, and then I will talk a little bit later about what type of training it is, but it is an entry-level training, so equivalent to open water dive or advanced diver, rescue diver, even discover diving. So there is the whole spectrum of courses that we can offer. So the first thing is that we are offering uh, the same uh, um, uh, diving techniques. So uh, let me just check one thing, okay. Uh, so we are offering the same diving techniques, meaning that we will teach similar approach to buoyancy, to trim, to finning techniques, to maneuvering techniques, teaching people how to swim backwards, how to move on a spot, how to utilize a variety of different finning techniques. We do use exactly the same safety protocols, which means uh, how do we plan dives? How, what is our approach to using different breathing gases than air? And how do we approach analysis of those gases and markings of tanks, knowing what risks there are involved and being or witnessing accidents that happen without that, about that. So preparation for the dive, any um, 
checks before the dive, so protocols before, so pre-dive safety checks, uh, all of the emergency procedures that are related to helping others, where the uh, classical one is, of course, gas sharing scenarios, where exactly the same protocols would be used on an exploration, highly advanced dive, as if we are teaching now during our beginner classes. Uh, of course, the training starts with exactly the same standardized type of equipment, which consists on a backplate wing, a set of regulators that contains a backup regulator that is on the bungee and the long hose. There is a talk that I have done uh, yesterday about that. And there is as well uh, a video on our booth that you in our play playlist that you can look at the equipment configuration. Um, and as well, one of the very key components to our training is the that we took or we used as well from the exploration dives is uh, teamwork because there we can really enhance the uh, mm, uh, the the training because we we never train apart from one or two courses one to one we always require to have a dive team because one of the key aspects for us is safety and the only safe way to dive is not to dive solo and is to dive with a well-trained team. And the standardization of training that we introduce, which I will discuss, discuss a little bit later, is that based on team. So there is no justification for not diving with somebody because this somebody that I am diving with is trained exactly in the same way, is using exactly the same protocols, safety uh, procedures, and exactly the same standardized equipment. So it's much easier to dive because the diver that I'm diving with is a mirror of myself in regards of equipment, in regards of skills, in regards of their mindset even. So these all aspects that came from the more advanced types of dives are utilized in our, uh, in our um, basic training. So one of the other things that uh, we try to achieve with our training, we would like to do or we, uh, we use a term of paradigm shift in regards of training, which in the beginning for me sounded a little bit, hmm, uh, what we are talking here about? But the idea behind it is that what the founders of the organization notice, and then what we are seeing as well nowadays is that the training is, the dive training is very often disconnected from diving itself. And it might sound a little bit strange because we do teach people how to dive and we do dive during this training term. So how come, we say it's a little bit disconnected. But from our perspective, the, how the training is being done is a little bit um, related to what is the end in mind when people are getting trained. Because very often people are getting trained uh, and the goal of the training is the training, and which is a very justifiable goal because if I would like to go on holiday and if I would like to discover the local reefs because somebody told me that it's worth seeing, Yes, I would like to get trained because I would like to know what I'm doing. And then my goal of this would be just to get trained. But our perspective is that if we start training with a different goal in mind, so a different goal set in our mind, it might create a little bit more practical, a little bit realistic training. So what I mean by that is that we try to do our training in a very realistic way, which means that if we teach skills, we will teach them exactly in a way that the diver will apply them while they are diving on their own. So very often, and I was teaching exactly in the same way, I, had, I have groups of students of six, for instance, teaching an open water course. I was doing that in a pool and I was asking people to sit down on their knees and perform certain skills, like for instance, mask clearing. But then, we are having a little bit different approach to that because most of the time if diver is diving, he will not be kneeling on the bottom to clear his mask because he will be swimming. He might be on a wall somewhere in Egypt. He might be drifting in a current and he will need to have the skill developed to that extent that he can actually do it in a very comfortable way. And he needs to be confident that he can actually do it. So what we are combining in our training is the basic skills like buoyancy, trim and Training techniques or maneuvering techniques and teamwork all together to train people with the basic skills. Because then how we teach people how to clear the mask is not by having a support of the bottom, but while being neutrally buoyant with support of their team, because this is how realistically the dive for them will look like if they would need to use that skill. 
The same goes with using an emergency procedure. So everything is realistic and pragmatic. And by pragmatic, I mean is that we are teaching skills that are actually being used in a context that they might be used. So for instance, one of the pieces of equipment that we ask our divers to carry as a standardized piece of equipment is a backup mask. So there is an extra mask in case the main one is getting kicked off of the face or is getting broken or it's leaking or it's fogging and the diver really wants to enjoy the dive. So we carry a spare masks. So then one of the skills that we teach is uh, like most agencies and everybody because it's required even by you know the agencies that define standards for training, they carry, uh, they, we do have a, a skill which is a no mask swim, but the no mask swim finishes with going to the backup pass that they carry, because this is a realistic scenario. If they are having their mask kicked off the face, they might need to swim towards the teammate. They might need to uh, communicate with them. And in the end, what they will do, they will switch to their backup mask. So this is what we would call a pragmatic training because we will train people exactly for what they will be actually using. The same applies, of course, to a more advanced training where we will teach people the skills that we know that they will actually be using in a context that is repetitively potentially happening. The other thing is that the, the training, the shift in the training that we would like to apply or that we are applying is a standardized gear, which doesn't mean one brand only. It's more the set, the configuration set that we are using. And then when divers are being trained from the very beginning with that particular set, so starting from discover diving, they will use a backplate wing and long hose and a backup regulator then it, the equipment comes with them as they train. So their muscle memory for that, for that equipment starts with a dive number one, and they will still use the same basic setup in their dive number 100 or 1,000. So their muscle memory, how to use that equipment, will be enormous. So it's the same with driving a car. If you are driving a manual car for the whole your life, in the end, or not in the end, but very quickly you will stop thinking what your legs are doing on the pedals of the clutch, on the gas. You will be just using it in a proper automated way, but the automated way will be a proper way because it was trained and then you got experience with it, which is extremely important piece of our uh, training as well. And then you are proficient with it. You feel comfortable and you feel confident because you have trained long enough and you have enough experience to use those skills. And the other thing that, that we try to shift with our equipment is the uh, what goal divers with, uh, with the training has. And, the goal can be as simple as I would like to enjoy my dives safely, comfortably. I want to feel uh, present in the water. I would like to see, I would like to experience and not fight with my own set of skills, not to think about my leaking mask, not to think what my buoyancy is doing. I would like to actually enjoy the underwater environment because this was the main motivation that I came here for. So, we would train people really to master the basics. And then on top of it, we will build towards the other goals. And very often what happens is if the divers enjoy their dives and they keep on diving, they will develop into certain professions even. And we do have courses that would support either their professional careers because we do have a scientific diver course. Uh, we do have a documentation diving course, which would allow people to share the passion and show others who are not divers how the underwater world is looking like. It will as well help them potentially to collect evidence for governments, for institutions, for universities, or samples to support approach to protection of that environment. So depending on what the diver has in mind, either is just swimming along the reef and admiring the underwater world or being more advanced, potentially even thinking about profession in that field then we can offer training and we can cater the training for that particular person. So this, this paradigm shifts means that the training that we are trying to offer is realistic, pragmatic, using certain things to do it and teach divers actually what they will need in the conditions that they will dive. And we try to, and we do have training that is designed in a way to accommodate that. So, the next thing that I would like to discuss is a little bit what I mentioned as well in the beginning that Dewey is not only a training agency and in fact it didn't start with training it started with exploration and then the need of training came after that. So 
we, our organization in, in based of something that we call pillars, and they are three main pillars of our training or of our, of our organization, where the first one is education. Or I would say one of them is education because it's not necessarily the first one. But yes, we do have relatively robust training. It is not, um, it has as very specific uh, features that I will discuss a little bit uh, later. But it is part of our uh, tools to achieve a goal as an organization. Um, so the first one is education. Then when you are educated, you might, or if you have enough tools, if you gather tools enough and you have practiced them, you did gather experience with using them, then you can go into exploration. And now one thing about exploration, it sounds, it, the word sounds big. I mean, it's like, wow, I will do exploration. And then if you looked at the previous videos that I showed, exploration, you know, like, very big depths, breaks that nobody has seen before, caves that are very deep and then I need to dive in them for hours. Exploration can be a very simple thing because if you have a beginner diver, every single dive for them is an exploration dive because this is the place that they dive for the first time in their life. So for us, exploration is more the allowing of people to dive environments that they did not see before. And of course, it is as well exploration in the sense of as an organization, we organize projects where actually we do dive in places that potentially nobody's seen before, maybe nobody documented before. There was a talk from Kirill, one of our instructors who is diving in Florida in caves that only few people have ever visited. And I think he was the first one to make photograph photography there. So he could show people outside who are not divers how beautiful that environment is and why it is worthwhile protecting. So the exploration, you should not perceive as something super extreme because it can be very simple. It can be a local project organized by local divers. And then because it gives them a reason to dive, which is really super interesting. Even in a local lake, you can organize an environmental project, which brings me to the other thing that if you do have the tools, if you do have a goal in mind, then and you have seen that environment and how fragile it is, and especially nowadays, how important it is to protect it, then you might develop the need of conserving that environment. So this would be the third pillar that we are basing our actions on as an organization. So we always keep all of these three factors in mind when we are developing either projects for uh, divers or we are organizing conferences or we are creating materials or releasing publications or releasing online platforms like, for instance, in-depth in magazine where we combine all of those three and then we are trying to showcase what the divers nowadays can do. And in fact, there is a certain flow of this. So it's from education, you can go to exploration and then if you explore that environment, you will be more prone to willing to protect it and then you will train more to take part in different exploration. But on the other hand, it can work from the other way around too. You might start with education, then you are maybe involved in more protecting that environment. And our training would potentially allow it because we put a lot of emphasis on buoyancy control of your proprioception, which means your awareness of your body in space, where your fins are, what they are doing, how you are moving underwater. And then you can go to the exploration and then you will be back to education. So you can see that the whole system is a circular system where you start somewhere and then you are through experience and being active diver, you kind of enhance your tools and then you are being integrated into more and more activities as a diver. Um, so what type of training do we actually is offering? Because I was talking now more about the concept behind and from where the training came from. So it came rather from the end of I'm a diver and I would like to share my knowledge because I believe my experience can be beneficial for others because I dived in more extreme environments and because of that I needed to develop a very robust set of tools and my own skills and then I would like to share it. So now what type of training we did develop over the years because we are existing since uh, 98 so we are a relatively young agency uh, but we are still proud of ourselves that we are still here after almost 20 years and we are still developing and even though we are a relatively small agency, that we are still keeping the same momentum and we are slowly developing into the direction that we as an agency envision for ourselves. So we do have entry-level training where we can start with discover diving, so showing people what diving is, but as well what the purpose of that program is to show people how they will get trained. So we introduce them to the equipment and to the system of training that have a specific features of 
having, of course, theory or lectures that they have exercises that they practice outside of the water, so-called field drills or dry runs, where they repeat certain mechanical movements like removing regulators or practicing out of gas scenarios as long as they have developed proper muscle memory where the instructor on land can still teach them feedback, talk to them. And then they will apply that in the water in practice under the supervision and active teaching of the instructor. So there is this introduction to that system during the introductory program so that people can see if they like this way of teaching and if they like the way the inter instructor interacts with them, provides them feedback. So if people are willing to try, we can offer that for them as well. So we have a program called Discover Diving. And then it goes into more mm, yeah, obvious development. We have a supervised diver who is trained to dive under supervision of a professional. We do have uh, uh, recreational diver level one, which is a entry level course uh, that trains people to dive to 21 meters with Nitrox 32 in a team of exactly the same trade divers. And it's a strictly beginner course, but the skills that they will learn are enough for them to be independent divers. So starting with simple things, of course, like clearing masks, replacing regulators, learning how to maneuver or manipulate this equipment set that they have to gas sharing, gas sharing a sense to SMB deployments, using a navigation, using a teamwork, communication, uh, having a variety of simulations of failing equipment. And all this is related to a very strong basis uh, with fundamental skills like buoyancy trim, maneuvering techniques or swimming backwards, using multiple different finning techniques to move forward and so on. So this is a very, uh, from our perspective, very practical and pragmatic training to teach people actually how to feel competent, confident and comfortable underwater, which is the basis of our training. From in the recreation curriculum, we will have Diver level two, which includes uh, rescue, which includes diving helium already. And Mike Menduno talked here about helium as well. So we do have a triox component in there. We do have a navigation component. There are certain additional uh, uh, training that they can do, like for instance, how to use a diver uh, diving scooter. Uh, then they can go into something which is a little bit introducing them to what potentially technical diving is, which is recreational diver level three, where they use already a stage with addi additional gas, but it, it's all recreation curriculum still. Because the main reason for us to have that is to train divers that they have an extremely solid basis of the basic fundamental skills. Because only if you have a very solid uh, fundament for that, you can really be safe underwater. And in the end, you can have fun. Because this is the main reason why we are underwater. It doesn't really matter either I'm exploring a wreck on 100 meters or look at the reef at 10. The other, the, the main reason for all of us to be in the water is just to have fun. And you can be fun when you feel confident, comfortable, and competent in that environment. So now based on that one, you can go into our tech or cave environment. And here, there is a one very specific course that we are offering called GOE Fundamentals. And I think we have, I mean, I don't, I, I'm sure that we have been the first ones who introduced this type of training that basically is offered to any diver that is being trained. And I think one of our instructors, Ben, had a talk about fundamentals course here as well, where fundamentals is a course that will teach you all of the basic skills that would be needed for you to enter our training, because otherwise, because of the strength or because how big part of our training the standardization is, entering straight from the street, let's say, to our tech training would be impossible and it's not because of the level of skills it's because of the standardization that we would that you would need to kind of catch up while you are training in a very new environment like a cave of attack and from our perspective it's not really safe and it's not really responsible from our side to allow people without having that basis skills and understanding of the standardization to enter those courses so fundamental course is a four-day course that any diver who is a non-smoker, which is a very important part of our training as well, it's for non-smokers only, um, can uh, enter that course and learn how to use the standardized system and then enter to more advanced training like a cave and tech training. And here, the specifics of that training is uh, that it's pragmatic. It's again, and remember that all what was on the previous slide about competence, confidence, and um, comfort, it's still applied here. So we are kind of building up 
on that fundament. So now we are going into training that is pragmatic, which will mean that you will learn things that can happen, that in this environment that actually can happen in that particular order. So we simulate certain scenarios of emergencies in a very controlled way and in a realistic way. So you will see the main purpose of that is that you can see how you will react, how your team will solve potential problems. If your decisions that you will take underwater under a little bit of stress that we introduce on those courses by introducing those scenarios, how you will take decisions. And if those decisions will be the decisions that will bring you and your team out of that emergency situation safely. So this is what I would call a pragmatic training. We do not do skills that are not happening underwater. We will not suddenly steal fins from divers. That Some training agencies, they do it because it is a little bit of fun and then they are being challenged. But how often you would do or how often you will encounter that situation underwater? Almost never. But how often or what impact it would be that you will not be competent in sharing gas properly or taking decisions in a cave to exit that cave in a proper way to bring all of the team back. So this is what the training is, it's pragmatic. Of course, it follows the same standardized procedures where now even more the standardization is important because you are entering more extreme environments. So all of both of those environments would we could call them that they are overhead environments, even for technical divers, because you cannot just, um, let me just take time. You cannot just uh, take the, uh, uh, you cannot just ascend from a technical dive. You will need to have a, uh, a decompression stop. So you have an artificial saying that you cannot just say, okay, I'm done here. I don't like it anymore. And I'm coming up. You, you have to stay in that environment and solve the problems. So because of that, it's extremely team oriented as well. So um, we teach how to work with the team, how to effectively communicate with the team, how to apply the tools that you have learned during the fundamentals course or during our recreational courses further on. So in the end, it is as well safe, but then it's even more fun because then you are really entering an environment that you might perceive as uh, challenging, but you as your team are effectively, uh, safely, pragmatically, able to solve all problems that we have encountered and still you have your brain capacity free to deal with issues that are unexpected because it's an environment that we cannot know ex exactly all of the possible potential scenarios that can happen. So we will try to train you in a way that you will have your brain capacity free to actually be able to deal with those problems as they come, even if they're like, wow, I have never seen that one before. And the third group of training, and I'm coming to an end, so it will be only a few slides left. Um, the, the other courses that we offer, the other group of courses, it's very, it's specifically designed for a specific uh, thing. So it is courses, there are courses like Documentation Diver that I mentioned that is teaching how to document or the basis of forms of documentation underwater from filming, photography, basis of survey, basis of working with underwater models or lighting underwater that you can actually present your project or present the environment that you'd like to protect in a way that is allowing the audience outside really to enjoy that. We have a scientific diver course that was developed and is applied in the scientific uh, environments. It was developed by in Portugal by our instructors who are sci teaching scientific diving and they are using this particular course to teach divers how to work with scientists and as well to the scientists themselves so they can actually do a work that is of a value for all of the universities or other uh, scientific institutions that are out there that they are needing divers to collect samples to document this and we teach them the proper scientific method, how to actually uh, work with scientists and bring them data that is uh, valuable for them. We do have things like cave survey, which is a very specific tool. So the, the courses that we would, I would not like to call them sp specialty courses because they're a little bit different. They are more courses developed for a purpose that we would like to enrich the toolbox of our divers to go there. And if you remember that triangle that I was showing, uh, that they will have tools that they can use in an environment that it's even more fun and it's kind of a lifetime experience that they will have. And all of this is kind of circling around this um, 
uh, these three pillars that we have. So where we educate divers to take part in certain projects to protect the environment. Or if they start to protect the environment, they want to get educated and they potentially will end up doing a project or doing as a small um, event for themselves or they will develop a certain interest and they might end up being and uh, working in conservation or protection of the environment or scientific part of that environment. But one of the things that I would like to add here in the end, and this is the end really now, is that if you look at these three pillars that we have, there is one thing that unifies that together. And this, from my perspective, is a very unique piece of our organization. It's the global community of divers that we have, because the way they are being trained, the way it's standardized, it creates divers that have a very similar mindset. They have the same set of skills. They do things in exactly the same way. So very often you will hear that Jewish divers can just meet, shake hands and go diving. And this actually happened this way because we do not need to explain ourselves how we will react in emergency situations because we know already because we have been trained exactly in the same way. So the only thing that remains is to plan the dive in regards of you know explanation of the dive site. We need to know where we are going. We need to know exactly what the goal of the dive is who is doing what on the dive. Uh, either we are just looking at the reef, watching you know, the, the beauty of the underwater world, or do, do we collect samples somewhere in the cave? So this needs to be explained, but all of the other things, the tools that we have are already there. So those we don't need to discuss. So it's just, as it says, shaking hands and go diving. And I would like to finish off with showing you um, uh, kind of the summary of this, where we have the, the community of divers, they are there, they are active because they do have tools to dive. So they do feel comfortable and safe underwater. The second thing, they are safe because they're using the same standardized uh, procedures, equipment. Uh, they will have the same uh, emergency protocols. So they are active because they feel safe, because they enjoy actually what they are doing. They will have the same mindset. They will have the same... Uh, urge to have a goal of a dive that is clearly defined and everybody understands what we are doing underwater. Either it's just for fun or for more advanced goals. And because of this, they, this group is extremely passionate about what they are doing. And I think it's very specific for GWE and that's why I'm talking here over time because I really would like to share that. Because I started to dive quite a long time ago and one of my first thoughts that I had when I started, I said, I need to share it with somebody because it's so extremely important that people see what underwater is. So our group of divers, even if we are relatively small, we are extremely passionate. So now let me just show you one uh, thing in the end. Uh, and this will be my final thing. Uh, before I finish, I would like to invite you to our booth where I will be hanging out for a few minutes and then I can answer some other questions or discuss further on. On the Dewey booth, you as well have uh, a chance of getting a one month free uh, access to our video platform, which is called Dewey TV, where you have quite a lot of videos about our training or we have some training videos that you can see the way we are explaining things and the way we are teaching things. So then you can go and explore there for a while. And then we do have as well a playlist where the training is a little bit more explained as well. And the playlist is here on the booth. Or eventually there is as well quite a lot of new content coming up on the YouTube channel that you can just subscribe to get notifications about our new videos about training and about the organization. But let's look what the divers that we actually have, have to say. So I would like to finish my talk with that small video and I will be on my booth. Uh, waiting for people who would have potentially some questions.
Yeah, it was the quality, the training was consistently on an extremely high level. Bit of passion to the training, dedicated and passionate about the sport. Team atmosphere. Everybody here is excited to be here. So many passionate divers coming together. Responsible divers say they respect the environment. Everyone wanting to help the others. Our willingness to roll out the carpet for others. They're always like, yes, yes, let's do it, let's fix it. Yeah, this is one of the things that is very really unique. Well, everybody is very supportive. We have lots of fun. It's just a great, awesome community. I'm meeting people all the time. Regardless of your skill level, regardless of your, where you come from, it's just it's incredible to see just such uh, a real family here. Great communities around the world. GUE is something that, that works, and I've seen that um, you know, for uh, 15 years now. So it gives you a chance to dive with people from all sorts of uh, areas of diving from exploration uh, divers just to uh, recreational divers. We share the ideas for winning to go anywhere with an open mind to get different perspectives uh, and a different point of view on how we can collectively share it all together. And it allows you to go to places where you wouldn't normally go. To get more possibilities, pushing each other to go out and explore different environments is big on That's the my really happens for Hi everybody, I'd like to talk about Global Underwater Explorers and our effort as explorers and passionate divers to create an organization that's become very much like a family. As a tight-knit group of passionate divers, we're dedicated to exploration projects and conservation projects around the world. And we've really built a robust educational program in order to support those endeavors. And now we've built a thriving global community and we're really excited and hope that you'll consider joining our community and joining some of our projects, our training and our various endeavors around the world. I hope to see you somewhere at a dive site soon. So now guys, with this I would like to finish, sorry for the final, not the best uh, presenting of the presentation, but it's just too many open tabs here on my computer. So thank you very much for listening, and I think I will be going off stage soon. So thank you very much for listening, and then uh, I will see you next time. <laughs>